Hey, welcome back to my channel. If you've been watching me for a little while, you know that I've been going track by track in most of the Taylor Swift albums. But a while back, I did mention that if a project came out that I was interested in, I would listen to it and put up a reaction. It might not be track by track on someone's album. It might just be one longer video rather than what I do with Taylor Swift. But around the same time, I did uh, start a Google form that if anyone wanted to give me suggestions on videos that they wanted to see from certain artists, certain performances, anything like that, I did leave it open for anyone to make those suggestions. And I actually did get my first one. It's been a while, but I did get my first suggestion um, on the Google form. And it was for Kelsey Ballerini. Um, apparently today she just came out with a like divorce EP. So thank you for the person that did request this. Uh, so I'll listen to it for you. So let's just get started. So I didn't have the title in the Google form, but it is titled Rolling Up the Welcome Mat, a short film by Kelsey Ballerini. I just thought you were on the red eye. Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not mad. I just, I just haven't seen you. Okay. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, bye. I know the music hasn't really started yet, but just someone standing outside holding two cups of coffee makes me think that they really thought this person was actually going to show up this time. Okay, so it looks like the short film is going to be split up in chapters, which I can only assume are going to be songs. So the first one is called Mountain with a View. It's 7 a.m. and I'm on a mountain with a view. I'm the only one alone at a table meant for two. Big Sur looks beautiful this morning and I should be missing you. I should be missing you. You're across the pond at a show, I think, in Amsterdam. And the pictures look pretty, at least they do on your Instagram We say good morning and good night I wonder if you even know where I am Where I am I'm wearing the ring still, but I think So based on those first lyrics, it seems like they're married and are in a long distant relationship because of maybe their careers or something And maybe, and it also just doesn't seem like one or maybe both aren't putting in the effort to keep this relationship up because they're resorting to looking at each other's Instagrams rather than talking to each other about their days and just simple things like that. So it definitely seems like they are at two very different points in their life right now. And I wonder if Mountain with a View is kind of saying that you're so far away that I can almost see you in the distance. But that might just be me trying to make things out of nothing. <laughs> the lion, sometimes you forget yours, I think what I'm trying. I realize you love me much more at 23 I think that this is when it's over for me uh. Hmm, so that's actually a pretty interesting lyric about I think you loved me more at 23. Um, I know they're completely unrelated and I need to separate Taylor Swift from other videos. But I actually just listened to Nothing New, which might be up right now. Um, I literally just recorded it, actually. Uh, but she did say something in that song about how you feel like you aren't enough for someone. And when you're younger, people more gravitate to you and you're worth more. You're shiny when you're younger. And she's kind of saying the same thing where um, when I'm younger, you appreciated me more. But now that I'm getting more mature, independent or changing a little bit, it's not the same. And I think that's an interesting topic that really shows that's a universal feeling. I can't believe I'm a few months out from 29. I can't handle another year of you and I just being fine. I've shared all my secrets and I've paid for all my crimes. And our stars ain't falling back in line. I'm wearing the ring still, but I think I'm lying. Sometimes you forget. So 
over for me I think that this is when I cut the ties I think that this is when I set myself free One day you'll last, but was it over for you? I'm taking the ring off, I'm finally crying Don't try to find yours, there's no reason to fight it You'll say I'm crazy for being the one to leave Scream, I'm just like so that was actually a pretty deep lyric right there because I feel like it's an interesting topic when you are leaving a not horrible relationship when it just isn't satisfying your needs, which is a very valid reason to leave a relationship. It's just like it's more amicable. And those are I feel like the ones that are hurting more. It's like you maybe can't exactly pinpoint what went wrong other than like they're a long distance relationship and it's just not working. So I feel like it's really hard and maybe that led her to kind of pretend because at the very end she kind of said that she's taking that ring off and she's making that decision and saying both of us are not what each other needs and it's kind of unfair to try to force each other to work out in that sense and I think it's also a very mature thing to do because divorce is not an easy thing for anyone and I feel like this is just one of those moments. Like my parents and giving up easy but you never tell that last like to see me looks like I am All right, so that was the end of the first chapter. Now we're moving into chapter two, which is song two, and it's titled Just Married. I don't think I lied when I said I wanted that life. Maybe I was too young to understand what I wanted to begin with. So that's an interesting lyric by saying that maybe she didn't lie when she said that she wanted this maybe quiet married life, but she's also acknowledging the fact that maybe I didn't lie, but maybe I misled myself and you because I was so young making that decision. I don't know any background on her marriage or anything like that, or even actually how old she is now, uh, but it definitely seems like she's saying that part of it is to blame on their youth. It was true with all that I knew. Felt like forever that December too A fairy tale start crossing our hearts Rode off in a car that said just married But I wasn't made for fixing a plate Or keeping our problems buried strong enough to keep on with all of the weight that I carried yeah it was love then it was just married that's a really cool uh twist on the lyric because she said a minute ago that they just got married like they had the car that said just married and then now she just said there was love and now it's just married so that kind of makes me think that obviously the love is gone. They're maybe just going through the motions. I feel like that was kind of addressed in the first song um, because maybe they had different ideas of what marriage would be. She doesn't seem like she wants to have that quote unquote like housewife life. Like she said she wasn't meant to like make a plate or something. So it just kind of seems like they were maybe on different pages or unrealistic about what it takes to be married. Yeah. 
okay, that was some really bad CGI, but I do like that motif for a uh, metaphor of her holding physical plates and all the weight that she was carrying with the decision of leaving someone. And then it just all came to a crumble again, <laughs> not very good effect effects on it, but I do appreciate what that was trying to symbolize. And I also liked that that came at the time where she said something about undoing I do. Uh, and I think that's actually pretty cool. But how was the name for fixing a play and getting divorced sounds scary? But how just not strong enough to hold on with all of the weight that I carry? Yeah. So now we're going to move on to chapter three, which is titled Tent House. We moved to a place with a view off of 8th Avenue after we said I do. And we watched cars of bachelorettes, 2 a.m. cigarettes, and try to get it downtown. And the interstate was so loud. I have no idea where they live, but she's a country artist and bachelorette trips make me immediately think of Nashville, but could be very wrong about that one. There was a lot it had to drown out. We play the part five nights, but we were never there on the weekends, baby. We got along real nice, but when I left town, did you hate? So that's actually a pretty interesting lyric as well because she's kind of saying that they're almost in their own little world during the nights that they're with each other and they just keep going through those motions and she's saying like in that common phrase of just playing house you do say that about younger couples they don't really know what they're doing yet so they're acting like they know exactly what it means to be married and doing the things that they think are right but it's really not working for their situation and just and just because of her celebrity status, like, you know, you're in a penthouse and you have all these nice things, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the perfect relationship or the perfect life. It's kind of like that thing where they say, like, not all that glitters is gold. And I feel like that's what she's kind of trying to say there. I bought the house with a fence, enough room for some kids, a backyard for dibs, and I thought that would make it all better. And maybe forever wouldn't feel like the walls closing in Cause how does that even make sense? Now that I think about it, it never did She says they're never there on the weekends and they played the part during the weekdays. I feel like that's kind of saying like most people don't have a lot of plans on an average weekday. So they're kind of forced to hang out a little bit or stay home. But on the weekends when they have opportunities to do anything without their partner, they're clearly choosing to do that. shit in the box and now we don't talk and it's things rolling up the welcome mat knowing you got half so with that lyric about the other person getting half that kind of makes me wonder if this was as amicable as what i'm thinking or like that was kind of displayed in the songs because i do feel like that line came off a little bit bitter saying like unfortunately you did get half which maybe she just doesn't want to share um you know her wealth her success with someone that didn't earn that but at the same time it did seem like their only problem kind of was the long distance so i think that's kind of an interesting 
um, addition to the feelings. But I do also know that grief or just breakups in general and stuff like that doesn't always have to be linear. It can come in waves and different feelings at different times. So that also could maybe be it there. You said it was wrong, I wanted it all along. So that was a good little jab line saying that the house that she's always wanted is the one that she just bought because he kind of didn't listen. Um, I know, I wonder if that's another issue in the relationship where it felt like the other person had more of control or they could have their feelings and opinions, but hers didn't matter as much because I could definitely see that being um, a relationship ender for sure. All right, so chapter four or track four is titled Interlude. <laughs> It's a thin line between love and hate And it was love, but it wasn't fate And my mama's asking if I'm okay And the internet says I'm losing weight This wasn't how it was supposed to play out So which side are you gonna take now? These people that I loved are just people that are new ones The rumors going around, but the truth is kinda nuanced I wanna set it straight, but my lawyer says I shouldn't And ain't it like this Since I wanna set it straight, but the lawyer said I shouldn't That's kinda funny Also, um, I'm not familiar with her music and I don't know how much she sticks to the country genre, but this definitely does not sound like country music. Time to only criticize a woman. I'm blowing up my life, but I'm standing by the crater. I'll walk out on the stage and go cry about it later. Good thing I'm good. She blew up her life, but she's standing by the crater. That kind of just makes me think that she made a drastic decision, but she doesn't regret it at all. Alone cause the towel signed the papers. All right, so chapter five or track five is titled Blindsided. Were you on the other line? A job in your car? Were you hiding upstairs? Or playing your guitar? Was there nothing ever wrong? Cause you were always right. Tell me, you... She just said something along the lines of like, you know, the other person's opinions mattering more. And she kind of just like confirmed that. So that's another interesting lyric because she's saying like, we went to couples therapy, like how blindsided could you be about her choosing to leave when all of the problems are on the table right in front of you? And it kind of makes me think that the other person is choosing to be a victim because if you're the person that got left, you have the sympathy cards and maybe that person is playing them a lot. <laughs> To get drunk to ever really talk. I told you red flag. But I need it, didn't have to ring my mind. So were you blindsided? Who were you just blind? That's another thing. She's saying that she didn't want a family. That kind of goes back to the beginning of the songs where. You, when you're young and you get married, you need to talk about those things and you kind of need to figure out what you want out of your life because you don't have to have the exact same life plan as your partner, but you do have to be on the same page about a lot of those things. And I do feel like those are big causes of divorces or breakups a lot because if you can't decide how you want to live your life together, then there's no chance of it working. Yeah. 
She said it was hard to hear, but it wasn't hard to find. So the problems were there. You just didn't want to hear it. Big show, we had a big fight. I slept on the couch, and then the next night, you put on your suit, I put on a smile, and sing about how it's okay to cry, dying inside. Now, yeah. That's such an easy Googleable moment, I bet. Like Googling 2019 Kelsey Ballerini performance, husband, bet you'll find it. So the final chapter is chapter six, and it's titled Leave Me Again. I hope you're spending Christmas with your family. I hope you're writing songs that you love. I hope you're feeling happier than you've ever been. And I hope I never leave me again I hope you're hiking that old trail in Westmead And I hope you and Jane are talking more I hope the top is off the Jeep and you're driving in the wind And I hope I never leave me again so with this song, it almost seems like she's wishing the partner well and saying that I hope you do all the things that you love, but I'm going to do the one thing that matters to me and not lose myself in a relationship or just in general. So it maybe feels like she's finally finding her freedom again and saying, like, I won't let myself lose that again. For a while, the shoe fit. But then I outgrew it and staying only made me This one definitely sounds like a country song. Get real good at pretend. So I hope I never leave me again. I hope I remember all the pieces of who I was that I lost on the way. I hope I learn to love myself like I loved you then. And I hope with that lyric, it's like you gave all of your love to the other person and kind of forgot to keep some for yourself. But never leave me again. For a while the shoe fit yeah. But then I So I hope I never leave me again. Ooh, 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 ooh. I hope when I see you that you smile. I hope that you find somebody new. I hope that you get the house and the good wife and the kids. And I hope I never leave me again. Yeah, I hope I never leave me again. I feel like that was such a great ending to this project because it leaves it on a positive note where again they were together they had a life together and she's not completely throwing that away she's just saying that we outgrew each other i'm gonna hold on to the memories but also i hope we all can move on and have happy endings in our own ways and finally get the things that we wanted 
And I really like that that's like a positive spin on like, you know, what is such an awful event probably for both parties. Um, overall with this project, I don't really have a big frame of reference with her work, but I definitely think this was a very cohesive and probably very, very cathartic project for her personally. And I just really like it when artists make things that are close to them and very personal and are willing to give that information up and that are willing to share that story. Um, I think that's a big reason why I've been diving into Taylor Swift projects because she's kind of known for that kind of honesty. And I feel like this follows very closely suit with it. Um, maybe this is something she's always done, but as far as I know, this is new to me. So I really enjoyed it. Now, is it something I'm going to go back to? Probably not just because it is very topic heavy and it's not something I personally like really relate to. So it doesn't make, give me a reason to kind of go back to it. I can definitely appreciate for what it is and how it's probably going to help a lot of people in similar situations. So I definitely think that's pretty cool. Um, but I just want to say thank you again for my first subscriber suggestion. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and let me know if you have any other suggestions. It will be in this description box and in most of the videos that I've been posting lately. So always feel free to give me one of those and I'll try to work on all of those if you give them to me. So thanks for watching.